medcram.com. Welcome to another MedCram lecture. We're going to talk about lymphomas. And lymphoma is a pretty big topic, so we sort of have to break it down. But let's talk about lymphomas in general. There are two major types of lymphomas. I want to sort of break this down for you here. There's Hodgkin's and then non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Uh, there's also another way of breaking it down, and that's into the different types of cells that are creating the lymphoma. So what is a lymphoma? A lymphoma is simply a collection of white blood cells for whatever reason. Either they're not dying and they're collecting, or there's something wrong with how the immune system is causing them to replicate, and they're replicating out of control. So we can divide it into the two types of lymphocytes, and there are B lymphocytes, and there are T lymphocytes. Now, the way that they can check this is by looking at markers. The thing to remember here, and this is kind of like a primer here I want to give you in terms of pathology, the thing you have to look for are the CD19. That's a marker for B cells, where the T cells, as you may recall, uh, are simply CD4 or CD8. Okay, so look out for those. Now, there's also another type of lymphoma that you can also have, almost in a different category, but we'll say it anyway, and those are dendritic Langer hands cells. And those are the antigen-presenting cells, as you may recall. And as you may recall also, they are S100 positive. And those are little burbit granules. They look like little tennis rackets in the cells. So just be aware of that these markers. There's S100, the CD4, CD8, and the CD19. Uh, so that's a, an important distinction there between B cells and T cells. Okay, so let's talk about specifically non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. We're going to talk about the different types. Now, these make up about 85% of all lymphomas. So only a small fraction of lymphomas are Hodgkin's lymphoma, and we'll talk about that. Specifically, 80% of these uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma are B cells, where only 20% are T cells. Now, of those 40%, I'm uh, sorry, of those 80%, 40% are from follicles, and 40% are diffuse, or form diffuse. We'll talk about those. So follicles, that means they actually look like the parts of lymph nodes, which is good because that's a mature effect of the lymph of the of the lymph tissue whereas if it's diffuse that's not good that means it's more primitive and not as differentiated so that's uh, that's not a good finding so those are two different things there uh, now and the 20 percent of the t cells they are always diffuse now why is that it's because b cells make up your lymph nodes and T cells don't. And where do you see follicles? You'll see them only in the lymph nodes. So if you're gonna have a multiplication of B cells, half the time they look like they should as they do in lymph nodes, and the other half, they're just diffuse. Now, let's talk about what are the characteristics of a lymphoma that make it good. What I mean by good is less proliferative or bad, more proliferative. So let's talk about less proliferative or more proliferative. So the things that you have to look at are whether or not they're cleaved. So a cleaved means that you've got a cell and they've got like a little thing in it, okay? Uh, they're not smooth. They've got a little cleave, cleave there, okay? Kind of where they get the term cleavage from, but a uh, little bit of a cleave, something is dividing it more proliferative would be non-cleaved, okay? What's the next characteristic? All right, what about small versus large? So small is gonna be less proliferative, large is gonna be more proliferative. If they look mature, that means they look more like the normal thing, which means they're not gonna be as proliferative. And if it's immature, that means it's gonna be more proliferative. It's another characteristic. We talked about this already, follicles versus diffuse. Okay, so just looking at, at the different types of lymphomas, and these are important because we'll actually describe some of these lymphomas with these words to see if it's a small cleaved or a small non-cleaved or mature with follicles. All of this boils down to is how aggressive is this lymphoma going to be? 
And that's important to know for prognosis. Okay, so once again, let's go back to our non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And I want to divide them because there are different grades. Okay, there's a low grade, an intermediate grade, and a high grade. So let's, uh, let's look at that now. And let's make up some divisions here. So we've got low grade and intermediate grade. So this is low grade, intermediate grade, and high grade. And let's just go through some of these. There's four low-grade lymphomas that you should know, and we'll describe them. Okay, the first one is a small lymphocytic lymphoma. And this type of lymphoma kind of looks like uh, CLL. Okay, that's chronic uh, lymphocytic leukemia. It also kind of uh, looks like Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia. Uh, it can secrete IgM. It's basically a B cell with diffuse proliferation of mature small lymphocytes. Now you probably have figured that out that even though it's diffuse, you've got mature small lymphocytes, which makes it a low grade. So we're gonna be looking at things here that are small, that are cleaved typically, but not always. So small lymphocytic lymphoma, kind of looks like CLL. Again, it's the thing that you're going to see is number one, it's a B cell. It's diffuse, which is kind of unusual for a low grade, but there you have it. And it's mature. And there's small. Okay, so that's number one. That's the first one that you should know. If you see a small lymph lymphocytic lymphoma, it's kind of almost like a leukemia in that sense. The next one that you should know is called mycosis fungoides. This is a skin uh, lymphoma and it's usually involving, it's, it's because of the T cells. So mycosis fungoides is a low grade lymphoma of the skin called mycosis fungoides, pretty straightforward. The next one that you should know is probably one that you should know because you see it on tests. And this is the follicular lymphomas, follicular lymphomas. Okay, why is this important? It's important because there's a certain translocation that occurs that causes this. What is a translocation? It's when one gene comes off and slips onto another gene. In this case, it's on different uh, chromosomes. So this is what we call a 1418 translocation of the B C L2 gene. Now, why is that an important gene? Because this is the gene that does something called apoptosis. Don't say apoptosis, it's apoptosis. The PT is ptosis. So, apoptosis. What is apoptosis? It's when the cell dies. This is the gene that causes the cell to die, which is good because cells are supposed to die. If they don't die, they accumulate. And if they accumulate, you get a follicular lymphoma. What happens is this translocation causes this gene to malfunction, which prevents the body from getting rid of these cells that should no longer be there. This can sometimes actually progress to the next phase, which is an intermediate grade. So 85% of them have this translocation. Okay, They're usually larger and diffuse. And you also, here's the other key that you see, you can see larger and diffuse are the ones that go over to the intermediate. But how do these typically look on their own? Typically, these are small and they're cleaved. And you should already know that because small and cleaved are typical features of a low grade lymphoma. So small cleaved follicular lymphoma, think of the 1418 translocation of the BCL2 apoptosis gene. Okay, that probably you'll see on tests. The last one that you will see is these something called an extra nodal lymphoma. Okay, these extra nodal lymphomas typically in, uh, cure with uh, occur with malt, which is mucosa associated lympho, lymph tissue. And it stays at the site of the origin and usually get these low grade with, guess what? Small lymphocytes. Okay, so these are the four different types of low grade lymphomas. Okay, what about intermediate? Well, I'm going to give you a break here because there's only two that I want to talk about in terms of intermediate. Uh, one of them is a follicular large cell lymphoma. 
and typically that can occur from these smaller ones that actually turn out to be larger from this 1418 translocation so you can get an intermediate grade follicular large cell lymphoma uh, okay so you just see large cells and the other type here you can get is something called a diffuse lymphoma and here you'll see b cells and remember we said half the b cells can form diffuse or half can form follicles well these are going to form diffuse no follicles or you can get a T cell mixed lymphoma. Okay, so those are the two that I think you ought to know. There's the follicular large cell lymphoma, and then there's the diffuse lymphomas that you can get uh, in general. All right, let's go to high grade. These are the ones that we don't like to see. Typically, we see blasts, and they're not cleaved, and they're large, and there's five of them. And I'm just going to, instead of writing the five numbers, I'm going to give you my mnemonic for remembering, and it's Lassie. L A S S I, just like the dog, Lassie. Okay, what's the L stand for? It stands for lymphoblastic lymphoma. So, what do you need to know about that? This is the one that can go to leukemia, okay, and it is T cell typically. Unfortunately, it accounts for 40% of childhood lymphomas. And it can go to the CNS and the skin. That's where you see it. So lymphoblastic lymphoma can progress to leukemia, uh, T cell, and 40% of childhood lymphomas. Central nervous system and skin can go to mediastinal lymph nodes and things of that nature. Okay, that's lymphoblastic lymphoma. A stands for adult T cell lymphoma or adult T cell leukemia, that one can also do it, go to it. There is a virus associated with this one called HTLV1. You should probably remember that. It's very common, it's actually, it's more common than not in Japan, more common than outside of uh, Japan uh, and the Caribbean. And what do they see? Uh, you see hypercalcemia in this one. So that's a, a, a finding. So if they ever give you a patient on presentation with a uh, lymphoma, it's aggressive, uh, the patient has high calcium or they're Japanese or from the Caribbean, I want you to think of adult T cell lymphoma. They may ask you what's the virus associated with this. It's not HIV, but it's HTLV1. All right, then S stands for Cesare syndrome. S-E-Z-A-R-Y-S -E syndrome. I basically just want you to uh, think of Cesare syndrome as a more aggressive form of mycosis fungoides. Uh, it's a malignant form. Instead of just staying in the skin, it spreads. And remember that mycosis fungoides is a T-cell lymphoma. Therefore, Cesare syndrome is also a T-cell lymphoma. Uh, and it's found uh, peripherally in the blood. Okay, what's the last S for here? This is a small... Okay, so that's unusual because it's a high grade. Usually you'd see large, but here it's a small. But it's non-cleaved lymphoma. And the, the name that you might associate with this, if you've seen it before, is Burkitt's. Also, you may see this on a histological slide if you get a chance to look at that as the one with the starry sky. Okay. And it's also associated with the translocation. It's associated with the 814 translocation, and the gene is the CMIC. This is a tyrosine kinase gene that does intracellular signaling, and it's the signal to make immunoglobulins, Ig. And so these things just start making immunoglobulins. They start dividing. Every single time they want, every single time the cell goes to make an immunoglobulin, instead of making an immunoglobulin, it divides. And you know these cells like to make immunoglobulin, so you can imagine how fast these cells are going to divide. So it can actually be leukemic. And you can see GI tumors. Uh, the famous picture is an African uh, with a very large jaw or very large neck mass. And this is also associated with EBV, Epstein-Barr virus, which is human herpes family. Uh, so just be aware of, of that. 
Okay, so again, small cell, non-cleave Burkitt's lymphoma. Think of starry sky. Think of the 814 translocation, the CMIC gene. Immunoglobulin uh, is associated with that and Epstein-Barr virus. Okay, the last one is immunoblastic lymphoma. And these can be T cells or B cells. Typically, they've got about a 50% cure rate, 50% from an immunological disorder of some sort. It could be, could be from non-Hodgkin's lymphoma as well. But just remember that I is immunoblastic. So what are the hot points here that you should remember? The hot points here that you should remember about lymphomas is they're divided into three sections. You've got the low grade, the intermediate grade, the high grade. Remember uh, the, th the things that make it low grade and high grade. So we're talking about whether or not it's cleaved or non-cleaved, small or large, mature or immature, follicles or diffuse. Uh, I think the things that they would test you on here is knowing these translocations because they are very uh, key to test. Okay, so knowing which translocation goes which which type of lymphoma. You should also know about, uh, I think, the adult T-cell lymphoma. That's a favorite one for test questions. I think memorizing what your high-grade uh, lymphomas are would also be uh, a key point there as well. I would also think that knowing that mycosis fungoides is a T-cell lymphoma of the skin and that Cesarea syndrome is a T-cell uh, lymphoma that spreads from the skin. I think that would also be a, a hot point to know. Uh, let's talk about Hodgkin's lymphoma in our, in our next lecture, but uh, thanks for joining us.